so this is Badvo. Uh, Badvo, the hill farm, has been in my family from the 7th of July, 1599. Oh my god. So it's over 400 years old. This whole side of the farm was derelict. It was yeah. just uh, disused. First thing I did was take down this half wall. I kind of climbed yeah. to the top and took it apart and ripped up the floors. So are you making one kind of gin right now? Yes. What? So we have three different yeah. types of gin all together. Yeah. Badvo, which is our original really yeah. strong herbaceous gin. 1451, which is the gin for the University of Glasgow. Yeah. And then our final one is liqueur, so it's like a slow gin. We do everything from all of the foraging yeah. to the distilling, bottling and labelling. So we do like the whole process through here. Mm -hmm. So it's really varied, which is what makes it so interesting. We were looking at like the bottles, which have all these like gorgeous labels, etc. on. Did you have an input in doing that? Yeah, I did all the labels myself. Oh, really? I was able to do that because I took Digital Humanities at Glasgow. Oh, did you? <laughs> yeah, so we had a 3D modelling course. So when it came to designing labels, I figured, well, that's just like 2D modelling. So it's much the same thing. Clearly, like, this is something you're super passionate about and it sounds like that kind of came together with your dissertation. The linguistic differences between gin and whiskey. Yes, yes. so it was really about uh, how gin historically yes. has been perceived as female and whiskey as yes. male okay. and about how we can trace that. Do you feel that like you're using English or English language? <laughs> Well, um, distilling, that sort of research weirdly, background? Or? Weirdly, I really do. I think it's because the distillery is actually 100% grant funded. So I basically just had to talk my way into yeah. it. And a lot of that is about communicating effectively, creating a narrative. And that's really what I got good at doing my English degree. I think I do more writing now than I would have if I'd gone and actually got a traditional job in journalism or writing. I have an article published at least once a month now. And you know, it's because I'm a distiller, people take my point of view seriously because I've done something and built something. So you were saying you were kind of like 19 when you decided that this was um, something you wanted to do. A lot of people think there's just one great big career out there for you. And I don't necessarily think that's the case. You could be happy doing a few different things and just develop what you're good at. And as long as it has a somewhat real life application, <laughs> I think you'll be fine.